after having just finished a playthrough of The Marvelous Mistake. I wanted to come back and do a review about it. My overall impressions of this game is that it's really good. I had a really fun time playing it. I did have one major issue with it, and one minor issue. But despite those two issues, I just really enjoyed it. So hopefully in this video I can do a pretty good job of showing you exactly why I liked it so much. So let's get a couple things out of the way so you know what's actually going on. I am playing as Sophia Take. That's her right there. Uh, there's a couple other characters here next to me that you get to play as, but I'll get to that later. So I am Sophia Take, and basically some stereotypical kind of mustache-twirling evil guy has basically stolen a bunch of paintings that should be mine. And my job is to go steal them back. So steal back what is rightfully mine. So I'm actually the good kind of thief. So I think the best way to show off what actually happens in the game and why I like it so much is to just jump right into a mission. So there are 25 missions in the game in total, separated into separate chapters. This is chapter, I believe this is chapter 3 that I'm inside of right now, and I'm just going to start on mission number 12. So let's just jump into it. Begin the heist. Okay, uh, before I do anything else, by the way, I also want to mention that you might notice that this game is very, very quiet right now. It does have sound, but the music is missing, and that's not because it's there's something wrong with the game. The game does have music, and in fact, this game has a very, very good soundtrack. It's one of the best parts about it. The soundtrack is wonderful. It's this groovy, awesome, jazzy sort of thing. However, I have disabled it for the purposes of this review, uh, because unfortunately it triggers a bunch of uh, bullcrap YouTube copyright stuff. And uh, during my playthrough, I did not turn off the music, because I felt like it would have hurt the playthrough far too much to turn it off. So if you're interested in hearing the music, you can go check out my playthrough, or you can probably see other people's gameplay of it, or look at a trailer or something like that to get an idea of what the music is like. But for the review, I'm going to turn it off. But suffice to say, the music is freaking awesome. The music is just as stylish as the, ga as the game's art style is. Okay. So. I need to steal back a bunch of stuff. Paintings and a bunch of gold things, and now that I think about it, I'm not really sure why I'm stealing gold things and not just paintings, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'm taking a bunch of stuff. And to do that, you basically just run right up next to stuff. And the hard part is, of course, avoiding the many, many people and things that want to catch you. So as you can see, there's a bunch of guards here, and they have their own little vision cones. And as you can probably imagine, if I step into the vision cone, do it right here. There we go. So that guard has spotted me, now he's going to come on over, but I'm hiding behind this. You can see the shadow in the vision cone, that means he can't see me over this. So I'm using this as cover. And that's one of the things I really like about this game, is how incredibly clear the visual feedback is as you're sneaking around. Because you can see everything's vision cone. And everything kind of has a, a, a nice timer that tells you exactly what's going on. Like, I'm in trouble here. Uh... Okay, we're good. Oh, uh, uh, almost got caught. So it's super clear what people can see. And exactly how long it's going to take until they go into alert status. <laughs> so if you stay in their vision cone for a little bit, they'll go to investigate. If you stay in any longer, they'll actually run after you because then they, they know you're there. So it's incredibly clear. So now that they've gone the other way, I'm just going to stop by these things and yoink. Okay. See, I'm hiding in the shadow of this thing. It's very nice. Super clear feedback. Now I want what's inside of here, and this is a little bit different from the other things. So the other things, you just walk up next to them and you take them. But this is more special. Um, this is actually an optional objective. You do not have to take it. But I feel like a lot of the fun in this game is not just uh, not just technically beating the level, but actually beating it based on a kind of more strict rule set. Kind of doing the optional stuff. I feel like that's where a lot of the fun lies. At least that's where a lot of the fun lied in it for me. Oh, crap. Alright, he's coming on over. I need to get out of here. Let's just hide back here. So if you actually take your time and you go really slowly and you don't worry about things too much, then this game is actually, for the most part, really easy. So I feel like where the real challenge comes in, and the real fun for me comes in, is when you try to do things more kind of competitively. So there is actually a kind of time that you can hit. 
Uh, you can see right now my best time on this mission is 1.50. I, I have completed the game, so that's why these uh, times already show up as being in here. And the pro time is to complete this entire level in 1 minute and 17 seconds. Which is extremely difficult, but the first time I went through this game, um, I wasn't trying to match the pro time, I was trying to match the par time, which was much more forgiving. I think it was something like 2 minutes, most likely. And that's where a lot of the fun for this game comes in. It's uh, making it under the time that they give you to make for the par time or the pro time, or whatever time you want to hit. And then also getting the optional objectives like this thing over here. Because if you just do everything slowly, it's pretty easy, but if you go for this optional stuff, it's really fun and exciting. So that's what I did for my playthrough, and I would definitely recommend that. Okay, so I want this thing, but there's a lot of people around here, and it's really hard to get to it. So what are my options for dealing with this? Well, one of the things is gadgets. And that's what that is. That didn't work out so well. Let's throw another one. So gadgets are things that can appear on certain levels, sometimes. It um, all depends on whether they want to use them or not. So various gadgets will appear um, throughout the game. Oh my god, I'm going to get caught here. Yep, I just got discovered. Let me restart. So various gadgets will show up on your journeys. This one here is a smoke bomb that I just picked up. And it's not like you always permanently have these gadgets on every single mission. Um, you have to pick them up actually inside of the mission. So it all just depends on whether the specific level has that specific gadget that you can pick up or not. So you'll never have more than one gadget. And in some missions, you'll have no gadgets. I'm gonna pick up this stuff. So this one's a smoke bomb, and it is very, very helpful. So if this guy's staring this way, there's a lot of different things you can do to avoid the guards. One way is just to kind of wait until they hopefully look the other way. But you can be a little bit more proactive. So one of the things you can do is, of course, throw the smoke bomb, like I just did before. Throw a couple of those and sneak on past. Now if I want to get to here, yep, there we go. Now he's looking the other way, so let's grab this. And what makes those things so special is that, after you grab them, the patrons of this place go and grab a guard. So it's a little bit more challenging than just going up next to something and grabbing it like these other things. But that's not the only way you can deal with guards. Because there's a bunch of different gadgets that you can get sometimes. You can use those. Or you can use this smoke bomb gadget. Or you can try to distract the guards. So one of the things you can do is whistle. And you can see the little radius on, radius on that. So it's not wide enough at the moment, but oh, here we go. There we go. So if I want him out of the way, I could wait until he comes around. And there we go. He's been distracted. So you can try to distract guards that way. You can also distract guards by running. If you notice when I run, there's that little shockwave that comes out. So that means if uh, a guard is in that radius as you're running by, they will hear you, like this. So there's a lot of different ways you can distract guards and get them to be in the place as you want them to be. And to be honest, that is most of the game, really. It's a very simple game. There's 25 missions that are fairly quick. Most of them you'll probably want to complete in about two to three minutes, although, you know, oftentimes they're going to take maybe half a dozen to a dozen tries if you want to hit the time. Yeah, if you want to get under the time. Yeah, 25 missions is pretty quick. It took me about... I think about five hours to beat the whole game, and that was with me trying to get under the par time and uh, get all the achievements as uh, when I was playing as Sophia. Or at least, well, most of the achievements, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. So you could definitely complete this game a lot faster than even that, if you didn't really care about any of the achievements or anything like that. So it's a pretty small game, it's a pretty simple game. You could easily get into it and understand it in probably five to ten minutes. And that's one of the things I really like about it. It's just a very simple and focused game. It really knows what it wants to do. Like, everything is just clear and and wonderful. I mean, it's, it's got a super clean and awesome art style. Everything is just... It just looks really cool. And if you could hear the soundtrack, it would sound very cool. The soundtrack is awesome. The art style is awesome. Even the animations are awesome. I mean, everything is just kind of... Everything's just cool. I mean, even just look at the way she walks around. 
she's strutting around like she's at a fashion show or something like that. It's just kind of an adorable, awesome game. I just love all the animation work and the music and the art style. It's just a really good-looking game. Everything's very clear and clean and the feedback as far as like what guards can see and what's going on is wonderful. All the vision cones and the way they overlap in this dark area indicates that they can't see over it. And those little rings that pop up showing you the radius of stuff, like the radius of the whistle. There we go. Like, everything's just super clean and clear, and it's really nice. It just feels good to move around. The movements and the movement is really snappy and responsive. Like, it just feels good to play. It's just, a, it's just a really fun game to play. Like, it just feels good to move around. Everything looks good and, and pleasant and clear and responsive and it's jazzy and cool and stylish. It's just, yeah. It's a really good game. So let's talk about the stuff that I did not like. So let me go back to the home screen here. There we go. Okay, so the the major thing that I did not like is the two other characters. Which, for some reason, they just decided to run away from me. What? Do I smell bad or something? Alright, so these are the two other characters that you get to play as. This one up here is Harry, and this one down here is Daisy. Let's go switch to Harry for a second. Here we go. So you get to play as these other characters. It's, they're introduced later in the game. And... Well... You actually have to play as them. So they're not just completely optional kind of uh, achievement sort of characters, but you actually have to play as them to complete the game. Because to unlock the further chapters, like this this door right here that is open, uh, this would be closed if you hadn't completed the previous chapter and you have to complete a certain amount of heists and stuff to get through to the next chapter. So to unlock each chapter, which each chapter is each room in this building, you have to complete a certain amount of heists. So you have to complete every mission as Sophia. She's she's the main character, and you have to do every single one as her. But you also have to complete a certain amount of missions as the side characters, as both Harry and Daisy. So to get to the next chapter, you might have to, for example, complete maybe three with Harry and four with Daisy. So not every single mission, but just you have to do some of them to move on to the next chapter. Now, if I actually enjoyed playing as these other characters, then it wouldn't have really been a big deal that I was required to play as them to move on to the next chapter. But the thing is, I really didn't enjoy playing as them. So let me move on to a mission as Harry, for example. Playing as these other characters was just not very fun. At first it was intriguing, just because I didn't know what their capabilities were. But then after getting kind of used to them, I realized I, I just don't like it. They control differently, and they have different capabilities than Sophia, the main character. And I really like controlling Sophia, but I just didn't like controlling these other characters. Like this guy, for example, Harry. Uh, one of the things about him is that he can't run. Which I find unbelievably annoying. I love running as Sophia. I Like, half of my movement across the map as Sophia is running. So the fact that I can't do that with Harry just drives me nuts. And he's also got this little gadget thing that you throw against the wall and stuff. And I don't really like this thing either. I just never liked playing as Harry. Which is really annoying because I was actually required to play as him, so... You know, there, there were these times where I finished all the missions that I could for a chapter. As Sophia. And then to move on to the next chapter, I had to play Harry for like three missions. And that just annoyed the hell out of me because I didn't like playing as him. I was like, oh, I guess I gotta go through this sucky part to get back to the character I like. And then if we switch back to Sophia... I mean, uh, switch to Daisy, the other character. Uh, she thankfully can run, and she actually has an interesting mechanic. Because instead of just stealing the normal stuff like the other two characters do, where they just steal uh, paintings and whatnot, uh, she actually steals keys from the guards. That's what these two little symbols are. And uh, let's actually go to a different mission here. This one isn't too good for what I want to show. Let's try this one. So she actually steals keys from guards, and then uses those to get into the safes that are around. So let me just show how that works real quick. 
yeah, you just kind of get, like get close behind him, and then the key pops out, and then you go and use that on a safe. Where's the nearest safe? Oh god, this guy's coming. Uh, Alright, there we go. So here's the nearest safe. Although if you do that, it sends off an alarm. So I'm probably going to get caught here. Nope, I'm okay. So yeah, that's how the gameplay works, says her. Kind of sneak up behind guards, steal their keys, and then open up the safes. Which is interesting, and I, I found that pretty interesting at first, but then the more I played as her, the more I realized I just don't like that nearly as much as playing as Sophia. So it was more pleasant to play Daisy than it was to play Harry. But I just prefer Sophia a lot more, so it really annoyed me that I was required to play as these other characters to progress. Because I just didn't enjoy them nearly as much as Sophia. So that was the major problem I had with this game. Other than that, the only other problem I had was the sort of RNG element. So let me just demonstrate that a little bit by going into a mission. Let's go back to Chapter 1. So these are going to be pretty easy missions. Let's go to Level 5. Okay. Oh, here's a different gadget, by the way. This one's just a distraction device. As you can see, it's got a very wide radius, which is good. Good for distracting. So the RNG element that annoyed me a little bit is the fact that, okay, if you're doing this mission, these missions and you're not worrying about the time at all, if you're not worrying about the time, then this doesn't even matter. Uh, and the problem, and the, the this that I'm referring to, is the fact that the guards are... Where they look and where they move is completely randomized. So they don't have set patterns. They don't have patrol patterns. You can't just memorize where they're going to walk, because you have no idea. And I do think this is kind of a good thing, because it keeps you on your toes. However, when you're trying to complete the level in a certain amount of time, this does lead to some frustrating situations. Where on, uh, especially on harder maps, where it's really hard to complete the entire level under a certain amount of time, there is a bit of an RNG element. Where, if you want to complete the level in a certain amount of time, it kind of depends on guards doing sort of the right thing at the right time. There are certain cases where maybe there's a room and there's two guards in it. And if the guards happen to be looking your way when you're running through the level, then it would require a large amount of time of, of waiting or trying to distract them to get by them. And you don't really have time to do that sometimes because you're trying to make it in under a certain time limit. So there are certain situations where you just can't afford to wait. You can't afford to try to distract them and, and whistle and try to get them to move because you just don't really have time. So there are certain situations where I would just repeatedly restart a level because I would run somewhere and then I'd find that the guards are looking the wrong way and I, I just can't do anything about it. You know, n the fact that they're looking the wrong way meant that I had to restart the level if I wanted to make it in under time. There's just not much I can do about that. So that did happen sometimes, which is a little bit annoying, but I don't I don't consider that a big deal. And uh yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are really the only two things I could think about this game that I did not like. It's just a very simple, very snappy and wonderful kind of game. It's just a uh, it's like it's perfectly bite-sized. Not too long, not too short, it's very satisfying, it looks wonderful, it feels wonderful to play. It's just a really good little game. So to cap this off, I think I want to show you me playing through a level how I like to play. I think it might be exciting. So before I was going through the level, kind of explaining every little thing and showing you how this stuff worked and how these gadgets worked. Let's get this guy to come over here for fun. But I want to show you me playing through a level how I actually play through it when I was doing my playthrough. Because I want to show you how it is to play through a level in the way that I find exciting, which is to try to make it in under a certain amount of time and to try to get everything in the level. Because that's what I find really exciting. It's not going slow, it's trying to go fast. Because that is crazy fun. So let's go to a more difficult mission. This is, uh, this is chapter two. I don't actually remember which mission is which. I don't know, let's try number nine. Sure. I think this one has dogs, doesn't it? It does have dogs. Eh, I don't want to do one with dogs. Well, maybe I do. Well, that's weird. Why did I come back here? Usually you come back to the home screen where you left off. Uh, let's try number 12. 
Okay, so I'm going to try to complete this level in a certain amount of time. So I'm going to show you how I actually played. Now, I'm not even going to attempt to make the pro time. So I'm going to try to make it in under, let's say, two minutes, because I think that's what my time limit was before. As you can see, I completed it in 150 before. I think the time limit was about two minutes. So I'm going to show you how exciting this game can be when you're trying to make it in under a certain amount of time. So this is how fast I normally go. Not doing this in a very smart way. In fact, I just got caught. Since I run around like crazy, uh, it always involves a lot of restarts. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. You can get really good about avoiding guards. And I just run everywhere. Oh crap. Oh crap. Ah, yep. I blew it. I blew it. I ran a little bit too close to him, so he heard me. So when you're trying to make it in under a certain amount of time, it always involves a lot of restarts, but it's exciting. Gonna take this out from under them. And there we go. Okay, I'm trying to make it in under... In fact, you know what? I might even be able to do the pro time. So I've done 40 seconds so far. The pro time is... 117. Yeah, you know what? Let's try to hit the pro time. I've never even hit it, but let's see if I can do it. Ooh, I remember this level was really hard. Oh, crap. Nope. I ran too far into the vision cone of the... the security cam. Get him to see me. There we go. Sometimes you want to be seen because you want somebody to move towards you. You want to get their attention. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so now he's out of there, so I can just grab yoink this. There we go. I uh, can't move forwards unless you turn around. Oh, no. Uh, uh. See, this is a case where I almost have to restart because I can't move past. But no, I'm good. He looked around. He looked away. Okay, uh, I've... Oh, I've already gone over the pro time. Alright. I'm gonna restart it then. So, I need to do that faster. I am... I really, really want to get the pro time. Crap, you heard me. <sighs> yeah, I need to get that room first. There we go. In fact, this is really re I don't even think I can do this, honestly. Looking at the time, I have, I have 17 seconds to make the pro time. <laughs> There's no way I can. Look at this. Oh my god, I think I need to complete the first level faster than I did. I'll try this one more time. Through the smoke mom, but it was too late. Okay, so you can see this is really, really difficult. Now, if you're playing through this your first time, it's not going to be at nearly as hard as this. Because the fact that I've completed this level... Uh, I've completed the part-time means that I now have to make the pro-time if I want the better time. 
So it won't be quite this difficult, but you can see it can get very, very exciting. And you can probably see why I like playing as Sophia so much, because it's just so fun to constantly run around and try, like, I, sometimes I try to distract guards by running. Like, I don't have time to stop and whistle, so I'll do this. Like, I'll run next to a wall, get their attention like that, and then run away. Something like that. It's just really cool. Ah! Oh no! I love the animation when she's running away from a guard. <laughs> So yeah, it's a really fun game. It's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see, what else to mention? I think that's pretty much it. Um, I guess I should probably mention that you can grab it from Steam and GOG, and I'll have links to both of those places in the description. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's a pretty small, pretty uh, bite-sized little game, and it's a hell of a lot of fun.